Welcome to this video on the Atomic Automation Oracle EPM Integration Solution. In this video, we will explain the Oracle EPM integration and what it brings to the Atomic user community. We'll provide some technical insights so that the integration components are clearly identified and the deployment sequences understood. We'll focus on the configuration of the agent and the design of the two core object templates, connections, and jobs. Finally, we'll run through a demo. Atomic Automation plays a central role in orchestrating operations across multiple environments, including the cloud. Atomic Automation synchronizes these processes with other non-cloud operations like ERPs. By integrating Oracle EPM, we can configure process automation centrally in Atomic Automation and then trigger, monitor, and supervise everything in one place. Oracle EPM processes can then be synchronized with all other environments routinely supported by Atomic Automation, like applications, databases, and ERPs. Oracle EPM's role is reduced to submit the jobs. All other functions, especially those pertaining to automation, are delegated to Atomic Automation. This means that we don't have to log into the Oracle EPM environment and keep on refreshing it by ourselves. Atomic Automation manages all the execution and monitoring aspects. Atomic Automation lets us build configurations with intuitive interfaces like drag-and-drop workflows and supervise them in simple dashboard tools designed natively for operations. Statuses are color-coded and retrieving logs is done with a basic right-click. From an operations perspective, Atomic Automation highly simplifies the configuration and orchestration of Oracle EPM jobs. Externalizing operations to a tool with a high degree of third-party integration means we can synchronize all cloud with non-cloud workload. Using various agents and job object types, we can build sophisticated configurations involving multiple ERPs, multiple database packages, system processes like backups and data consolidation, file transfers, web services, and other on-premise workload. A conventional architecture involves two systems, the atomic automation host and a dedicated system for the agent. The agent is configured with a simple INI file containing standard values, AE system, agent name, connection, and TLS. When we start the agent, it connects to the engine and it adds two new objects to the repository, a connection object, to store the parameters that make the communication between the agent and the Oracle EPM system possible, and a job template designed to trigger Oracle EPM jobs. Let's assume we're automating four instances of Oracle EPM. We create a connection object in Atomic Automation for each instance by duplicating the con template for each of these instances. Lastly, we create Oracle EPM jobs in Atomic Automation for each corresponding process in Oracle EPM. The Atomic Automation jobs include the connection object based on the target system. When we execute the jobs in Atomic Automation, it triggers the corresponding process in Oracle EPM. We're able to retrieve the successive statuses, supervise the child processes in the cloud, and finally generate a job report. In Atomic Automation, this Oracle EPM job can be incorporated in workflows and integrated with other non-cloud processes. Deploying the integration. The procedure to deploy the Oracle EPM integration is as follows. First, we download the integration package from Marketplace. This package contains all the necessary elements. We unzip this package, which produces a directory containing the agent, the INI configuration files, and several other items, like the start command. We use the appropriate INI file for our specific platform. Oracle EPM is a standard atomic agent. It requires at least four values to be updated, agent name, atomic system, JCP connection and TLS port, and finally TLS certificate. When the agent is configured, we start it. New object templates are deployed. We create a connection object for every Oracle EPM instance that we need to support. For this, we use the template con object, which we duplicate as many times as we need. The con object references the Oracle EPM's REST API URL. Finally, we use the Oracle EPM job template to create the jobs we need. 
We matched this atomic automation job to the Oracle EPM start EPM job, reference the connection object and run it. We're able to supervise the jobs, generate logs, and retrieve the status. The job can then be incorporated into non-cloud workflows. We install, configure, and start an agent to deploy the Oracle EPM integration. The agent is included in the Oracle EPM package, which we download from Marketplace. We unzip the package, which creates a file system agents slash Oracle EPM slash bin that contains the agent files. Based on the platform, we rename the agent configuration file UCXJCITX and set a minimum of four values, the agent name, the AE system name, the host name and port connection to the automation engines JCP and finally the directory containing the TLS certificate. Finally, we start the agent by invoking the jar file via the Java command. The agent connects to AE and deploys the object templates needed to support the integration, the con or connection object, and the Oracle EPM job template. In our demo, we will create a connection object. Once we have established the connection to the Oracle EPM environment, we'll create a start EPM job. Finally, we'll execute and supervise the job. Let's log into the Atomic Web interface. We have an Oracle EPM folder which has two different connection objects along with the job object. Let's open a connection object and have a look at its attributes. The endpoint indicates where the actual EPM service is running in the Oracle environment. The Oracle EPM integration supports two authentication types, basic and OAuth2. The basic as authentication type requires you to specify the username and the password. If you use the OAuth2 authentication type, you will have to configure the following. The authentication endpoint defines the token URL. With this token, we will get the token for the subsequent job. The client ID and the client secret are the replica of your username and the password in the basic authentication. You must also select the OAuth2 version. The integration supports V1 and V2. If we select V2, then we must define the scope. The scope determines the permissions that this particular client application will have to communicate to the Oracle EPM service. As happens with the basic authentication type, if your actual services are running behind the proxy, you can specify the proxy parameters here. After saving the connection object, we can use it in the job. Let's have a look at an EPM job. First, we open the attributes page and assign the agent that we have just installed to the job. We switch now to the job parameters. Because we have already set the agent, some of the fields here will already contain parameters. For example, when we open the connection dropdown list, we see the connection objects that we have created. We have to select the one that we need to connect to our Oracle EBM system. Then we specify the application name. Again, since we have already assigned the agent to the job, when we click the Browse button, the dialog displays all the available applications in Oracle EPM. Now we must specify the type of job that we are creating. The integration supports the following types. Rules, role set, and import data. The rest of the configuration parameters will depend on the type of object that we select here. In this case, we have selected rules. By clicking the job name browse button, we open a dialog where all the jobs of type rules are displayed. For this demo, we have selected clear empty blocks. In the JSON and payload fields, we configure the values to be passed on to Oracle EPM. In JSON, we specify the format, which can be none, JSON, or file path. None means that no parameters are passed on to Oracle EPM. If we select JSON, then we must enter the payload definition in the next field. If we select file path, then we have to specify the path to the JSON file that contains the attributes that you want to pass on to Oracle EPM. For this demo, we have configured a job that passes the values using JSON. In payload, we specify the parameters. In our job, we have defined the scenario, the period, and the year. What we're telling Oracle EPM here is to set FI 17 for the year, January for the period, and actual for the scenario. Let's execute this job. 
This means that the Oracle EPM job called Clear Empty Blocks that resides in the application called VisCNSL will be executed on the Oracle EPM environment. During its execution, we can open the agent log report where we can see the connection and job parameters, such as endpoint, authentication parameters, job parameters, the final payload, and so on. When the job has completed, if we refresh the report, we see that we have now got the final response and the job has successfully finished. Let's see what happens in our Oracle EPM environment. After we refresh the view, we see that the clear empty blocks job that resides in the application called VisCNSL has completed with the scenario, year, and period parameters that we have specified in Atomic Automation. Once the job ends, its final status, whether successful or not, is passed on to Atomic Automation. The status and the job ID are printed to the report log. We can find additional information about the execution of the job in its execution details, such as the job ID and the EPM JSON. If we include this job in a workflow, we can pass these values onto subsequent jobs in the workflow so that further actions are taken based on them and on the status of the job. Thank you for watching the video on Atomic Automation Oracle EPM Integration Solution.